Project 10 multi power. This circuit has three sources of power which are connected to work together. We have the hand crank, the solar cell, and the motor, which will act like a windmill. For this project, I'm going to use this desk lamp and the meter will be set to the five volt setting in which it already is. And I am going to mount this circuit right below the lamp. And you can see that the meter comes close to four volts when it's underneath the lamp. Then if I was to turn the crank, it will also produce some energy. I'm going to turn the windmill. It's best to put it in a direct wind, like from a fan or outside on a windy day. Now, if I was to turn this hand crank, I would actually turn on the yellow LED. But I can't do that one-handed. Project 11, battery power. We will use this circuit, which includes the horn, red LED, clock, motor with fan, and hand crank. For the first phase of this project, we will turn on the slide switch. Please turn down your volume because the horn will be loud. And when I turn it on, the red LED, horn, motor, and clock all come on. The rechargeable battery here is powering everything in the circuit. For the second phase, we will turn off the slide switch and then blow or spin the fan so that acts like a windmill and see what kind of how much energy it produces. If you spin it fast enough it will power at least the red LED and horn. From this angle, it's better. But it do, I don't know if the clock lights up, but I know that at least the horn and red LED come on. Now for phase C of the project, we will push the press switch and then turn the hand crank. And you will see that the fan spins. If I turn it faster, other components may come on, but I can't hold down the button and turn the hand crank fast with one hand. But you kind of get the idea of how the hand crank is now supplying energy to the circuit even though the battery is disconnected. You can charge it, you can crank in both directions too. And that actually seems to produce more energy because all the components activate. Project 12, wind warning. This circuit acts like a wind detector to warn you of very high winds. We will have the motor on its pivot with the fan attached and depending on the direction of the wind as well as whether the slide switch is off or on, you may see lights or hear sound. On different settings, I was unable to get any of the components to activate and I double checked my wiring to make sure that it was correct, but nothing seems to be working. The wind has to be extremely strong, I think. So if I place the uh, windmill, if I place the small fan in front of a big one, 
then it might spin fast enough to activate some of these components. So there are different combinations in which the LEDs and horn could work, which are determined by the setting of the slide switch or the direction the wind is blowing. Project 13, light charger. This circuit is very simple and we will place it underneath a light source and watch the red LED. The more light the circuit receives, then the brighter the LED should get. And in turn, it's supposed to indicate that the battery is charging. So this circuit relies totally on solar energy to charge the battery. But it seems like it's not getting near enough. Oh, maybe the red LED is on, but it's hard to say. But, yep, it does come on, but the brighter it is and the faster the battery will be charging. If I took it out in direct sunlight, then it would probably charge faster. But this is like a regular electronics charger that often has an indicator light to indicate whether or not current is flowing through it and the battery is charging. Project 14, electric circuit. Using this very simple circuit, we will push the press switch and the red LED lights up. The principle is incredibly simple in that it just shows how current can only flow through a circuit that is complete. And make sure the battery is fully charged before you use it so that you get maximum performance out of it. Now, here on this page, they tell you what exactly happens when current flows through the circuit. The battery has protection circuitry in order to protect it from over, from high amounts of current, and it converts chemical electricity energy into electrical energy and pushes it through the circuit. And then a battery pushes electricity through a circuit just like a pump pushes water through a pipe. Now the snap wires are solid wires that carry electricity through just like the wiring in your home. The switch allows you to connect or disconnect the circuit and turn electrical components on or off. And then the red LED converts electricity into light. But an LED only allows current to flow in one direction. If I was to turn the LED around, it will not light because electricity cannot flow through it in, that, in the opposite direction. It only flows through one way. And then the base grid is for mounting the circuit. Here you could easily compare an electric circuit to a water flowing system. Project 15, close the door. The principle of this circuit is very interesting. We have the red and yellow LEDs and both switches. When we move the slide switch to the left position, the red LED comes on. When we push the press switch, the yellow LED stays off because current cannot get to it. But when I hold down the press switch but move the slide switch to the right, the yellow LED comes on. And you should note at how current is flowing through the circuit to the yellow LED. The part portion of the slide switch that the red LED is attached to is open and so electricity cannot flow through it. But if I was to move the switch back to the left, now the red LED receives the current and the yellow LED does not even if I hold the press switch down. The switches in a circuit can be thought of as doors. When the switch is on, the door is closed, but when the door is open, but when the switch is off, the door is open. 
and here's like uh here are some diagrams that might give you a better idea with how the doors in this circuit work. Project 16, feeling switchy. We'll use this simpler circuit, which still includes both switches. We have the yellow LED and horn, and we will hold down the press switch and the yellow LED lights. But when I move the slides, I'm going to move the slide switch to the right, volume warning, loud horn, the horn comes on, but the yellow LED turns off. That's because, well, in both, regardless of the position of the slide switch, the press switch has to be held down. The slide switch is determining which direction the current flows. It can either th flow through the horn or through the yellow LED, but it cannot flow through both components at once. And these switches act like those in your home that control lights, fans, and many other devices. Project 17, Voltage and Current. In this project, we're going to learn about different units for measuring electricity, as well as the demonstration of the voltage meter. When I hold down the press switch, the meter will reach three volts. It's on the five volt setting. The electricity flowing through the battery is now being measured in voltage. Now when I move the switch over to the second setting, 0.5 MA as well as 50 MA, the meter is overloaded. It's unable to measure how much is flowing through. But it's important to know the difference between volts, amperes, or milliamps, and watts. Voltage is the electrical pressure exerted by a battery or other power source. Circuits need the appropriate voltage to work properly. If, for instance, if a light bulb does not have enough voltage, it won't work, or if the voltage is too high, the bulb will overheat and burn out. Current measures how fast electricity flows through a wire, just like water current flowing through a pipe. Current is measured in amperes, or amps, or milliamps, which is the unit on the voltage meter, MA. MA abbreviates milliamps. A milliamp is one one thousandth of an ampere. Lastly, power measures how fast energy is moving through a wire. You can calculate power by multiplying the voltage times the current. And that is measured in watts. If you, you probably have seen the number of watts on a light bulb, what it is rated. What's interesting about electricity is that it's danger it can be dangerous, of course, but did you know it's the current that is dangerous, not the voltage? The current is what kills you or seriously injures you, not the voltage. Because the faster electricity is flowing through a wire, then the more dangerous it is. Project 18, light emitting diode. For this project, we are going to set the voltage meter on the 50 milliamp setting, and we will have the slide switch set to the C position. When we push the press switch, the red LED will light. In addition, the voltage meter will read close to 30 milliamps and then holding on to the press switch I am going to move the slide switch to the B position and the yellow LED will light while the red one goes off. Now the meter has a much lower reading 
just over 10 milliamps. The yellow LED uses a lot more energy than the red LED, but it is brighter. LED stands for light emitting diode, like what the name of the project shows, and LEDs, which were first perfected in 1962, convert electricity into light. They have many advantages over other types of light sources, such as having a longer life, using less energy, being more durable, and cool to the touch. And therefore, they are used in many applications, such as, as indicator lights on devices, seven segment displays, but lately they've been used a lot in house, business, and outdoor lighting. They are becoming more and more popular. Project 19, resistors. We will use this circuit, which contains the pivot stand. Now the pivot stand has two resistors in, built into it. One of them is 47 ohms, and the other is 10,000 ohms. There's a big difference in the value of the two resistors. For the first phase of this project, we will set the voltage meter to 50 milliamps, to the 50 milliamps setting, and the slide switch to the C position. I'm going to push the press switch, and the voltage reader meter reads close to 50 milliamps. So the 47 ohm resistor limits extremely little current through the circuit. It probably would not register. For the second phase of this project, we will set the voltage meter to the 0 0.5 milliamp setting and then move the slide switch to the B position. Now the 10,000 ohm resistor is in the circuit, and when I hit the press switch, the meter reads just over 0 0.3 milliamps. That's a very small amount of current that is flowing through the circuit compared to in the first phase of it. A resistor is an electrical device that limits current flowing through a circuit. How does a resistor work? Well, it provides resistance, which is like electrical friction. If you rub your hands together, they will begin to feel warm and you are, and the friction that you create by rubbing your hands is converting the effort into heat, but resistance is the electrical friction and it's slowing down an electric current, it's limiting the electric current and the material it's flowing through. It's the loss of electricity from, the loss of energy from electrons as they move through whatever material the current is passing through. 